hello and welcome to this video um, my my purpose for this video really is to introduce you to the iLab environment um, as we have it here at the Obafemi Awolowo University um, uh, for now our environment if you're used to the iLab environment anywhere it's quite likely that you'll be used to this environment as well now I'll, I'll simply just perform an interactive experiment and hopefully by doing this you'll understand how to make use of this environment it's quite um, self-explanatory the environment is intuitive but well just in case somebody wants to view this video I think it could be of help as well now OAU's service broker is located at ilab.oau.ife.edu.ng slash sb or service broker now there are two possibilities um, there are two different service brokers at present but let's use the slash sb version because um this is going to be ultimately the service broker which we'll be using all together um, the as sla the slash service broker is going to be retired very soon so in the, so let's just use the slash sb um, this sometimes misbehaves and so I often prefer that people use the IP address 62.173.43.96 slash sb so I'll press enter on that and it brings us to okay a moment there so it brings us to this page okay just welcomes us to um, the iLab you, they have there's some information here which one could read up if you're looking for just information on OAU's iLabs and you like to read up on OAU's iLabs then you could just simply go to um, if you remove this slash SB say 62.173.43.96 if you just um, press enter at this point it will take us to this home page with to this point where it just we just talks about iLabs and OAU's iLabs so you, you see some information in here see some pictures as to some activities which you've had but i'll leave you to explore that so i'm going to log in at this point um, I'll, my username and password have been entered i'll just hit the login button when you log in it depends on how many groups to which you to, to which you belong if you belong to just one group you, this page will not load but if you belong to more than one group this page will load now um i am i belong to two groups that's the test group a group for those for testing new experiments before proper deployment and a virtual labs group that's a group for those who want to perform virtual labs which will have so i'll just log into which of them should i take um, okay let's take the virtual labs group now if you had only one group if you are a member of only one group then when you log in it will just take you straight into those groups and you what you will have will be something like this but if you are if you belong to more than one group then you'll have to select the group you want to um, perform experiments in and then you'll be able to log in so for this um, video i'll just and um, go ahead and try to perform the ohm's law ilab sim there are a couple of other experiments um, out there which we could have performed but let me perform the ohm's law experiment or at least we'll get to that to the stage of performing the experiment i won't actually perform the experiment so to go in there i'll just click on ohm's law ilab sim now because it's an interactive experiment i'll need to schedule a session now this is where things change from the batched experiments for batched experiments at this stage you'll find a button to launch the lab and the only other button you might find there might be something like webcam or documentation or any other link which we would like to put there but in this case, for an interactive experiment, only one person only one person can perform the experiment per time. And the reason for this is that when one person is performing the experiment, um, he has the control complete control over the laboratory setup. So he submits his specifications, he receives the responses from the laboratory, and he uses them himself. No other person can submit specifications to that laboratory system while he is um, performing the experiments. Now, the reason why we would like to have this, for example, is if we want to perform a robotic arm experiment, I want to control the robotic arm. Then for a period, I, I would like to know that the robotic arm is under my control, that I am the only one sending specifications to it. That way I can monitor how it's behaving, I can monitor its response to myself and I can uh, perform the experiment live. So this experiment is, a, is an interactive one, so I'll, I'll click on schedule stroke redeem session. This may take a moment but then it comes next to this page. 
um, where I have a small calendar here which shows one month and then I have a small box here and, and three buttons down here if I already have made a reservation for this experiment before um, any experiment I any reservation I had made will be listed inside this region here but if I have not made a reservation before it will be blank to make a reservation I'll need to click on the date I'd like to make a reservation in and then um, I'll make the reservation in that date okay so I'll go ahead and make a reservation for today today is 11 October 2011 I click on this date and it brings up a pop-up um, window now if you have in case you have a pop-up blocker installed at this point you might want to turn it off for this site um, it has uh, there are a few pop-ups which come up here and there and um, they are they're perfectly safe and so you need to turn up the pop-up blocker otherwise you will not be able to perform this scheduling so I want to schedule a time. I could schedule literally any time today. The time at present is 5.27 p.m. And so I could sh schedule any time between 5.27 and um, 12 midnight because I selected today's date. Now I'll click close to the top. That's 5.27 or 17.27. And let's say I want this. Um, I want to reserve four minutes. Okay. Four minutes, zero hours or four minutes in the laboratory. I click on make reservation. It tells me the reservation from... Um, the 11th of October which is today 5.27 p.m. to um, 5.32 p.m. is confirmed okay so that has been confirmed so I'll just close this now because I've made a reservation I scroll down and voila we find it here this is a reservation which I have made for this experiment I just I could schedule more time if I wish say on another date but for now I'll just perform this experiment so I'll click on this time which I've scheduled it reloads this page and I scroll down when this is in blue I scroll down and I redeem reservation to perform the experiment. Let's say I made a reservation which I do not want to honor anymore. I could remove that reservation, in which case I click on this and then you see a pop-up um, message which asks, asks if I want to actually remove this reservation. So in the meantime, I'll, I want to redeem this reservation. So I'll click on redeem reservation. Now again, the re reservation is to start by 5 27 pm which actually is a little over a minute ago so um when i click on redeem reservation it brings me straight to this page which has this button launch lab if i try to redeem the reservation before it is time for that reservation it will give me a message telling me i still have so so and so days and so so and so minutes and so so and so hours to my reservation so i cannot get to this page until my reservation is due so in the meantime, my reservation is due and I have just about two minutes left for it. So let me click on Launch Lab. So I'll click on Launch Lab. At this point, it may take a few moments. It may take a few minutes actually for this next page to load. But at this point, it loads immediately. It tells me when my reservation started and it tells me when it is going to end. And then um, for some versions of um, the web browser, the remaining time you have per unit time will be at every point in time. The remaining time will be displaying the status bar. I click on OK and it takes me to the next page. On the next page, I will have the um, laboratory, the laboratory environment, so that I can perform the experiment. Okay, so this is the Ohm's law experiment. I'll just scroll down a little so you can see some things in there. This um, experiment engine or the client was um, made using LabVIEW. So if you're familiar with LabVIEW, you know that um, to perform the experiment, you'll need to click on this Run button. So you could click on the Run button and then okay i'll just scroll scroll down a bit uh, let me take it a bit to the right and then if i put in if i change this value you see something's going on well i won't talk about the details of this ex this particular experiment i'll just hit the stop button okay when i'm done with performing the experiments then i could leave this environment to do that i click on back to interactive service broker once I click on this, it takes me back to this window. Note the Launch Lab button is in there. To get that Launch Lab button, I must schedule a session and then redeem that session. And then I see that Launch Lab button, but not unless I've just done that. And so that's the general procedure for performing the experiments. If you click on My Experiments, it shows you a list of experiments which you have performed in the past. Um, the times you performed the experiment, you could click on this and you could get some more information about this. I'll leave you to explore that. You could go to your account, change your password. My labs just gives you a list of all the labs you have available. And usually it's good practice that if you are not going to honor a reservation or if you finish um, your laboratory 
session before the reservation expires it makes good sense to just simply come back to this schedule stroke redeem session and remove the extra time which you had um, scheduled just remove that so that somebody else who wants to perform the experiment and who was hoping to schedule this time could be able to schedule it so for instance if you scheduled one hour for your experiment and you end up needing, needing just five minutes it's um, rather polite to remove the reservation remove the remaining time the remaining reservation um, once you are done with your experiments so I hope this video has been educative and I hope it has been helpful to you you could leave a comment below if you have any questions or if there's anything you'd like to know um, thank you very much